Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video I'm going to be talking about carbocation stability. Also, thank you guys so much for helping me reach 100 subscribers. As a reminder, a carbocation is a carbon atom with only three bonds. So if you look here, this is methane. Methane is carbon with four bonds, and typically carbon is going to want to form four bonds in order to be neutral. However, if you take one of these bonds away from methane, you will have a methyl carbocation, which is a carbon atom attached to three hydrogens. Because carbon wants to have four bonds, but this one only has three, that makes the carbon atom deficient. Notice that this is a violation of the octet rule, because if we count the electrons around carbon, we have 2, 4, 6, and it wants to have 8 in order to fulfill the octet rule, so this carbon atom is deficient. Another thing to note is that carbocations are sp2 hybridized, trigonal planar geometry, and electrophilic, meaning that because they are deficient, they are oftentimes susceptible to nucleophilic attack. Let's look at the different types of carbocations. So the main types that we have are tertiary, secondary, primary, and methyl carbocations. If we look at the tertiary carbocation first, you'll see that the tertiary carbocation is attached to three different carbon atoms, whereas for the secondary carbocation, it's attached to two carbons. Primary carbocations are attached to one carbon, and methyl carbocations are attached to no carbons. So the first thing you want to make sure that you see here is what we mentioned on the last slide, which is that a carbocation always has exactly three bonds. And that's very obvious for the tertiary carbocation because it has three bonds to different carbon atoms. You can also see that the methyl carbocation has three bonds to hydrogen. However, make sure that you see for the secondary and the primary carbocation that there are hydrogens attached. So on the secondary carbocation, how many hydrogens would it have? It would have one hydrogen, right? Because if you think about it, if it needs to have a total of three bonds and it already has two bonds to carbon, that would mean that it has one bond to hydrogen. What about the primary carbocation? Exactly, that would have two hydrogens attached because it already has a bond to carbon and therefore needs two additional hydrogens in order to get a total of three bonds. Now when we look at this, we see that in terms of stability, tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary, which is more stable than primary, which is more stable than methyl. This has to do with hyperconjugation. Hyperconjugation is the favorable interaction that occurs between the empty p orbital of a carbocation cation carbon and then the adjacent methyl groups in this case. So having additional carbons around the carbocation is going to help stabilize it via hyperconjugation. And that's the reason why tertiary is so much more stable than methyl, for example. So let's go into a little bit more detail regarding carbocation stability. I just want to warn you guys that you might find some contradicting information if you look at other resources. And then other resources are going to agree with this. So I just want to put that out there because I've noticed in my own search of carbocation stability that there is some discrepancy, particularly between a couple of carbocations, debating which one is considered to be more stable. So I'll mention that here. This is the general trend in terms of what carbocations are more stable versus the least stable. So we're going to start looking at tertiary plus resonance. When you look at tertiary plus resonance, that has the benefit of both being tertiary, so it has that hyperconjugation, and then it also has additional resonance structures. Resonance is so important to carbocation stability because it allows you to spread out the charge, and that is going to really help with the stability. After tertiary plus resonance, we have just regular tertiary carbocations, which have three carbons attached, so they have hyperconjugation, but they don't have that benefit of resonance. That is similar in energy, or about equal, to benzylic carbocation cations, which refers to a carbocation coming off of a benzene ring. So it's in that benzylic position, one carbon away from the benzene ring. Next, we have secondary plus resonance carbocations, which are also referred to as secondary allylic carbocations. Those are going to be more stable than carbocations that are just secondary without any resonance. Secondary carbocations are similar in stability to carbocations that are primary with resonance 
resonance. Because remember, primary carbocations are not very stable, but when they have resonance, they can become close to as stable as a secondary carbocation. Then we have primary carbocations, which are not very stable at all. And as a matter of fact, they don't really form. The same goes for methyl carbocations. And then finally, vanillic carbocations are the least stable. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit more explanation for these. So if we see here an example of primary allylic or primary plus resonance, you can see that the carbocation is primary. And so it is only attached to a single carbon. However, because the carbocation is on a carbon atom that is a single bond away from a double bond, that means that it can participate in an allylic resonance pattern. And you can see the resonance pattern drawn next to it. That allows you to spread that positive charge out between both of those carbons, which is going to be very stabilizing. However, even better is secondary allylic, because now we're spreading out the positive charge between both of these carbons as well, but the carbon is secondary, so it has more hyperconjugation. Now you can see what benzylic looks like. The reason benzylic is so stable and is actually considered to be similar in stability to tertiary is because it has a lot of resonance. You can see that the benzyl carbocation over here is able to go all the way around the benzene ring for resonance. Finally, the least stable carbocation is vanillic, where the carbocation is directly on top of the double bond. And this does not have resonance. A lot of students confuse allylic and vanillic carbocations and mistakenly think that vanillic carbocations have resonance when they do not. Remember, allylic refers to the carbocation being a single bond away from a double bond, and that will have resonance. This can also work for a triple bond. However, for vanillic, the carbocation is directly on top of the double bond and is going to be very unstable. So there's some discrepancy regarding tertiary and benzylic carbocations, with some resources saying that tertiary is more stable than benzylic and others saying the opposite. And the truth is that benzylic carbocation stability varies because here we're looking at an example of primary benzylic. However, you could also have a carbocation that's secondary benzylic or tertiary benzylic. Benzylic carbocations are considered so stable because of all the resonance they have. Whether or not they're actually more stable than tertiary is kind of debatable. And the resources that you're going to look at, whether they be different textbooks or reliable online resources, are going to vary on which is considered more stable. So I would recommend that you ask your professor directly if you have any doubts. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.